Hello and welcome to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about infinite limits and virtual asymptotes. So let's get right to it. What is an infinite limit? So you might be thinking that these are limits that involve infinity in some way. And yes, you would be correct. It's just that in this, in this kind of the limit, we approach infinity in a different kind of way. So normally you have two options. You could to, for example, the limit, as x approaches a, f uh, a value for a certain function and that will equal infinity or if you prefer minus infinity they're both the same thing or in different cases but you could also for example do the limit as x approaches infinity of a function which is equal to well something which we don't know in this video we're going to be talking about the first case so we're going to be taking the limit of a function as it approaches a value and then we're, go we're going to be checking what happens to that function and in this case it will of course involve infinity so we're kind of doing this situation we're going to be checking what happens when a function approaches a value and that should involve infinity in some way so let's kind of investigate this a little bit as a kind of a quick kind of thought example let's consider this limit the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x squared. What is that equal to? Well, let's kind of make a table of values to kind of investigate what's actually going on with this. So let's just make a quick table right there. And let's say that this, this first kind of value here is the x value. And let's say this value right there is f of x. So let's just make that a bit neater. Uh, let's make a new line, and there we go. And let's see here. And if you go ahead and do the other one, the other row is going to be f of x. Okay. So let's see. If I were to plug in x equals 1, well, that's going to give us 1. That's easy. Now, if you plug in x equals 0 0.5, well, that's going to give us 4. If I keep going, so for example, I'm going to do a few values. So if I plug in 0 0.2, I'm going to get 25. Notice it just suddenly jumps from 4 to 25. That's quite the large jump. So that seems to suggest that the values will get bigger and bigger. And you would be correct. So let's go ahead and investigate this a bit more. 0 0.1, that gives us 100. So there's a four-fold jump from the, from the third value to the fourth value. That's pretty significant. Okay, now the next one is going to be 0 0.05. Well, that's actually going to give us 400. That's massive. The next one is 0 0.01. That's going to give us 10,000. Wow, that's really big. And the last value we're going to check is 0 0.001. That's actually going to give us 1 million. That's huge. Okay, so that seems to, that seems to suggest that as the value of this function approaches zero, we get really big. Or in other words, when you get extremely big, we're going to essentially reach, well, infinity. And that should make sense. Let's kind of look at this in a more kind of a graphical point of view. So if I were to actually draw this graph of y equals 1 over x squared, well, uh, as I get closer and closer to zero, well, we're going to get higher and higher up. So it's kind of it's kind of going to look like this. For reference, the graph of 1 over x squared kind of looks like this. So this right there is the graph of y equals x squared, roughly speaking. So symbolically, we kind of write down infinite limits like this. The limit as x approaches a value for a certain function equals infinity. Note, I have to stress this, it doesn't have to reach infinity. It could reach minus infinity as well. So for example, it could also go below the x-axis like that. That's okay. But the point is that because most limits tend to go to infinity in some way, and we just use positive numbers just because they're nicer, we just symbolically, we just tend to write infinity. Of course, if it approaches minus infinity, that's totally okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so with that being said, let's kind of look at the more visual sort of example, just to kind of emphasize my point. Then I'll do a very direct example just to describe what happens with minus infinity, and then that should be it. So let's keep going with this. 
So this right there is the y-axis, that's the x-axis. And let's suppose I have this arbitrary graph, which I'm going to draw like so. So here's my little first part of the graph. This and then this part with the dotted line, I'm going to say it's undefined. And let's say, suppose the graph kind of looks like this furthermore. And let's say this part right there is y equals f of x. So this graph right there is the graph of y equals f of x. f of x is some function which I don't know. But that's okay. I'm, I just care about the graph itself and not the actual, what the, like the function of the graph itself. I just care about the graph itself, not the function. Okay, now let's take a look at one-sided limits as we did previously in the last video. So the limit as x approaches a from the left, so, so I'm going to use a different color for this, just to, kind of, just to kind of emphasize everything. The limit as x approaches a from the left, so the left, once again, I am looking. So if I'm looking this way, the le my left uh, hand would be this side, and my right hand would be this side. So the limit from the left in this situation would be from here and that's actually going to go to minus infinity because this part is an asymptote and as i kind of mentioned is i can go as close as i want to this value but i can never touch it so in this situation the limit as x approaches a from the left of f of x is equal to minus infinity similarly the limit as x approaches a from the right, so in this situation, I'm approaching a from the right. So it's go so once again, I'm looking to the right, it's going down, 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 and I can, I can get close to it, but I can never actually touch it. So in this particular situation, the limit is equal to, well, that's still equal to minus infinity. And of course, because both these limits are exactly the same, we can conclude that the limit as x approaches a in general of f of x, well, that's equal to infinity, or minus infinity, rather. Okay, so what does this all mean? It means that we have something called a vertical asymptote. A vertical asymptote occurs when one of the limits from either end equals infinity. So this is the definition of vertical, what a vertical asymptote is. In high school or in earlier, like, school times you might have learned that a vertical asymptote is a point where the function is undefined that's not necessarily true that's that can that's actually very deceiving and it doesn't always work out that way for example the graph of y equals 2x over x is not the, the, it doesn't actually have an asymptote at x equals zero it has a, something called a discontinuity so that's not the same thing so don't be deceived by that a vertical asymptote only occurs when the limit at a certain point equals infinity in some way. So in other words, it doesn't the limit doesn't necessarily have to equal infinity from in general, but it has it does have to equal infinity or minus infinity in, in one way or another from either direction. So in other words, what I'm trying to kind of justify with this is that a vertical asymptote, which I'm going to denote VE for short, only occurs when the limit as x approaches a certain value of f of x equals plus or minus infinity. It, again, it doesn't matter if it's plus or minus. It just has to be infinity in some way. Now, note, it doesn't have to be a. It could be from either end as well. So, for example, the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x, as long as that's also equal to plus or minus infinity, that's also okay. That's also work class and toad. And similarly, the limit as x approaches a from the left of f of x is plus or minus infinity. If this, if any of these conditions are true, we have a vertical asymptote. So that's basically the definition of how a vertical asymptote works. So there's nothing too special about this. However, we kind of have to just talk about what it means like visually. So let's talk about this with a very concrete kind of example to kind of emphasize a certain point. So this right there, this right here is the graph of y equals 1 over x. So let's go ahead and draw this graph. So this is the graph of y equals 1 over x. So you got to be a little bit careful here. The, notice that the limits from both sides are actually going to be different in this situation. So for example, this is the graph, this is the y-axis, and this is the x-axis. The limit as x approaches 0 
actually depends on which direction you're approaching it from. In the other example, when we did y equals x squared, it didn't matter because from both directions, the limit was always going to be equal to infinity. But here we have a different kind of situation. The limit as x approaches 0 depends on if you're coming from left or right. So to kind of emphasize my point, the limit from the left in this situation, well, that's actually going to go to minus infinity. So the limit as x approaches 0 from the left, which I will use a red pen for emphasis of f of x, or I, I should probably put y equals 1 over x in this situation, that's actually equal to minus infinity. But if I go the other direction, suppose I want to take the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of 1 over x, well, this right there is actually equal to infinity. So it's not the same limit. So consequently, and just to kind of prove my point, I'm going to put a red pen there. Okay, so notice that from the left, it's equal to minus infinity. And from the right, it's equal to infinity. So it's approaching different directions. Okay, that means the limit in general actually does not exist. So the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x is d and e. It doesn't exist. But 0 is still a vertical asymptote. And the reason for that is because the limit from either one of the ends is still infinity or minus infinity in some way or another. So it's possible to have a vertical asymptote even though the limit doesn't exist. And that's okay. That's totally allowed. We just have to make sure that the limit from one of the ends is infinity in some way. As long as that's true, we have a vertical asymptote. So because these two limits are exactly the same, well, I shouldn't say exactly the same, but rather because both these limits both approach infinity or minus infinity at the same point, which is zero, from both ends, we have a vertical asymptote at zero. So let me just write that down. And consequently, I can just draw a kind of a dotted line to kind of tell them apart. And that's it. That's all there is to vertical asymptotes. We will do a few specific examples using trigonometry and logarithms in the next video. But for now, hopefully this video helped. And if it did, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you all so much. I'll see you in the next video.